um, <clears throat> back to the issue of the two-state solution, what would you say is the President's hope and expectation here? Is it that the Prime Minister's stance on this will eventually shift? The, the hope is that when, there's a, when, when this conflict is over, that we can work in a collaborative way with the Israeli government on a, and counterparts in the region on good governance in Gaza. Um, good governance that the president hopes can lead to uh, a viable two-state solution, bless you. Um, and again, he's not, he's not Pollyannish about this. He understands how hard this is something he's been uh, pushing for for a long, long time. Um, he knows it's going to take dedicated leadership on all sides here to bring it about. Um, and, and that means constant engagement by his administration and, and the national security team. So, so we're going we're gonna to keep at that work. I guess I'm just wondering if the two leaders are completely at odds on something as fundamental as the creation of a Palestinian state. Do you know if the president has reason to believe that at some point the prime minister's view on this will change? Publicly, he has been very clear about where he stands on this. You mean the president has been very clear publicly where he stands the on this? The prime minister has been very clear on the fact that he rejects the idea of a Palestinian state. The mm -hmm. president also has been clear that he wants a two-state solution. Yeah, look, this is just, th th this, we, we're not going to agree on everything. We've said that. And good friends and allies can have those kinds of candid, forthright discussions, and we do. It's not going to change the president's view that the best long-term solution for regional security, particularly the security of the Israeli people, uh, is a free and independent Palestinian state uh, that, uh, that can live in, in, in peace and security with, and this is an important caveat, with Israel's security also guaranteed. Uh, he still believes in that. And uh, we're going to continue to talk to our Israeli counterparts. This isn't about you know, trying to twist, tw uh, uh, twist somebody's arm or, um, or, or force a change in their thinking. President, uh, uh, sorry, Prime Minister Netanyahu has, has made clear his concerns about that. President Biden has made clear his uh, strong conviction that a two-state solution is still the right path ahead, and we're going to continue to make that case. So, so what is the overlap there? I guess, you know, when the two leaders are having a conversation like their phone call today, what is it that the Prime Minister is saying to the President to indicate that that gap can be bridged? I won't get into the Prime Minister's side of the conversation. I think that's better for his staff to, to, to speak to. All I can tell you is that the President reiterated his strong conviction in the viability of a two-state solution, understanding, of course, that we're not going to get there tomorrow, uh, that there's an active conflict going on, and that we want to make sure Israel has what it needs to defend itself. But as we're talking about co post-conflict Gaza, and we have been now for many, many weeks, you can't do that. Uh, without also talking about the aspirations of the Palestinian people and what that needs to look like for them. Uh, so we're going to continue to have those conversations. John, were the Prime Minister's comments yesterday a factor in why this call took place today? Was that something that the U.S. decided they wanted the President to speak with him today about that? No, this was a call that we've been actually trying to land on the schedule for uh, quite a bit of time here. So this was not, you shouldn't read into the fact that the call happened today as as some sort of response to the Prime Minister's discussions or comments yesterday. And did they talk specifically about those comments yesterday, or was a more general reiteration of the President's support for a two-state solution? Uh, again, without getting m more beyond the readout, I would just say that uh, uh, there was certainly on the agenda for both leaders was to talk about uh, post-conflict Gaza, governance in Gaza, uh, and, of course, a, a two-state solution. And can you just tell me a bit more about what the president meant yesterday when he was asked by my colleague whether the strikes in Yemen are stopping the Houthis, and the president said no? I think, you know, if you just look at what happened yesterday, it, it's, it's pretty self-evident. Uh, they continue to have offensive capability, and they continue to be willing to use it. We also have plenty of uh, defensive capability available to us, and we continue to use it as well.